This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. What you just heard there was me having a bit of a rattle through the uh, guitar solo from Connie Francis's uh, hit Lipstick on Your Collar. It's a solo that's been requested a few times. Um, I put under the microscope on the channel, so I thought today was a good opportunity to do that. And... Um, I don't know, it all seems to uh, go down rather well when I do these kind of 50s rock and roll uh, themed uh, solos as well. The interesting thing about that solo is the chap who played it. This is just a, a little aside. Um, it was played by a chap called George Barnes. He is his Wikipedia page. Um, an American swing jazz guitarist who played the first, who played the first electric guitar in 1931. Uh, he disputedly, so it's not um, settled upon this fact, but he disputedly made the first commercial recording of an electric guitar on March the 1st, 1938, in sessions with Big Bill Brunsey. Um, it says here, there is some dispute over the first commercial recording of the electric guitar. Barnes played an electric guitar on two songs, Sweet Heartland and It's a Low Down Dirty Shame, sung by Big Bill Brunsey and produced by Lester Melrose. And that happened in, in on uh, March the 1st, 1938. Some historians, however, attribute the first recording with electric guitar to Eddie Durham in 1935. So basically, um, yeah, there is uh, some dispute over whether George Barnes did play the first ever electric guitar solo. But I just thought it was an interesting little um you know potential fact to include this uh in this video about his one of his probably more famous solos. Anyway, that's all uh, aside. Now let's uh, let's take a look at what's actually going on in the solo we're talking about today from Lipstick on Your Collar. Here's an explanation. Solo explanation. Okay, as always, let's begin our little breakdown of what the solo is all about by taking a look at the uh, the chord sequence it's played over. There it is, right there. So you can see basically G, C, and D with a B7, E minor change in there uh, later on in the second half of the solo, which does lead to some interesting note choices, as we'll see. Um... But for the most part, we're playing here um, in a very sort of pentatonic way, um, arguably with a little bit of mixolydian stuff going in. So if I just play the first couple of licks, it goes... And then... So... Like that. That is all just basically G major pentatonic. But the addition of this F note here by bending that E note up there starts to suggest the mixolydian mode a little bit more. Basically, if you take G major pentatonic, G, A, B, D, and E, and add in an F note and a C note as well, then you have the G mixolydian mode. And we come on to the C note next, actually, um, because... Uh, those licks that we've just seen there are all happening over the G chord. Uh, let's just put the chord sequence up again. So in the first two bars, by the time we've done those licks, uh, we're onto the C chord at the, uh, the second half of the first line. And we basically take a similar sort of approach just by moving up here. You can see how you can, as I said earlier, G major pentatonic. You can see that main kind of crux of that pattern there, which which the licks are sort of uh, being based around, is coming out of a G chord. Well, we can do exactly the same thing coming out of an E chord, a C chord up here, rather. So we get... Uh, all 
like that, just playing the same sort of ideas uh, out of the C chord sort of shape. And then we're back down to more of this uh, G chord. So, of course, the chord has gone back to a G again. Uh, so... And then back up to the C chord again. And then... This, at this point here, after those kind of G major bass licks and C major bass licks, uh, this is where we encounter that B7 to E minor change. And uh, what goes on here over the... The final part of the uh, the G chord before the B7. Let's have a look there. So you can see in the third line we've got a G chord at the beginning of it. Then it goes to the B7. Well, at the end of that G chord, he plays like a little kind of almost a sweet picked or rake picked um, G major arpeggio like that, which is just that D chord shape moved up until it becomes a G like that, and then we conclude on this D sharp note here, which is. A note coming from the B7 chord, so you get something like that, um, resolving onto that E note there for the E minor chord. Let me just consult the tab. Uh, yeah, then we've just got like a little kind of E minor pentatonic lick like that. This is the interesting bit here, because we're going back to that B7 chord uh, next. He plays... Something that you could arguably call a, um, a super Locrian lick. Um, basically, the super Locrian scale or super Locrian mode is one of the modes of the melodic minor scale, and um, you would use or you could use that um, kind of lick in this sort of situation. Let me just uh, tell you what's going on. Basically, we're in the key of G, and that B7 chord there is sort of targeting an E minor. Over the top of that, you can, uh, over the top of that B7 chord, you could use B super Locrian. Like that, to get those kind of uh, licks, like that. Um, so what's going on here is, as I say, we've got... And then we land on that F-sharp note there, which is part of the B7 chord. And this is where that sort of jazzy super Locrian thing comes in with... So the super Locrian scale would be uh, something like this. And you can see like that there. It just whizzes by, whizzes by rather, at such a a fast pace that you don't notice it but it's you know slow that down and play it in a slow blues and it'll sound really you know kind of exotic and um you know a bit robin ford like um or josh smith or something like that then after all of that uh we're basically back down to um this pentatonic sort of thing again here where because we're onto the c chord again by now Like that over the C chord, back onto the G chord, and just some sort of G minor pentatonic -y kind of stuff down here, you know. Arguably, arguably a little bit Dorian. Basically, this kind of lick here, which you find in a, in a lot of old rock and roll tunes. Like that, Stevie Ray used to use it a lot as well. But, you know. Where you're basically just bending this E here. Can not even up a semitone. That's that will be up a semitone. Just bending it slightly sharp and keeping the the B flat on top there like that. Like that classic little rock and roll lick. Uh, uh, then we come down just um, a kind of a mixture of G major and G minor pentatonics to to round the solo off with this lick. Like that, just mixing elements of uh, G major pentatonic with, uh, uh, what are we? 
G minor pentatonic like that. So a lot going on in this solo, this this neat little rock and roll solo. Um, lots of great fun licks to be had, especially for me. The highlight is, uh, you know, this one. Uh, that one there over the B, B7 to C major chord change. The uh, Let's do it again. Which, as I said, you can kind of see is coming out of uh, part of the, uh, the... That um, B super Locrian kind of thing, but uh, I don't want to get too heavily into that <laughs> or any more so at the moment i'll probably do a video on all that sort of stuff um and maybe get uh, 20 views that seems to be what happens whenever i do anything remotely jazz orientated but i do like it anyway hope you've uh, found some cool sounding licks that you can get under your fingers from this so go away and have some fun with them and as always there is a full tab in both guitar pro and pdf formats along with a clip of me playing the solo and that explanation you've just seen there and a back track to play along with all of that is up on my patreon page there's the address and the link is of course as always in the description it's only three dollars or two pound fifty a month and you get access to all of these extra bits and pieces that go along with these youtube lessons i want to say a massive massive thank you to everybody who supports me in that or any of the other ways all of which are linked down in the description and that is pretty much it for today folks hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful and informative in some small way and if that's the case please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so and why not give me a like while you're at it don't forget the live stream every friday 5 p.m uk time where we drink beer and talk about music and guitars and all manner of whatever else crops up basically it's a fantastic way to kick off the weekend and i would love to see you there if you can make it but for now i'll be you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching thank you for your time look after yourselves folks stay well stay safe and above all stay sane bye for now